Hey there everybody, JB back once again for another episode of Let's Play Ships Challenge. Now, in the last video, I promised you a story about this level, and so I'm going to tell it to you. And um, what's going on here is that you're basically just pushing a bunch of blocks into the center to get a bunch of ships. And I gotta admit, I thought this level's title was a hint. Like, Pier 7, I thought, okay, so you have to count like water columns like this is one and two three four five and like sevens here so i thought you had to push the blocks up there not so yeah it's just telling you how many blocks there are not how how many spaces you have to count and so you know because I, I, I guess i thought you know south pole was a hint so why couldn't this be a hint i mean it wasn't i guess it wasn't too unreasonable to assume but it was kind of silly now that i look back and like i said in the nuts and bolts uh run I didn't have any semblance of logic in my head whatsoever at the time, so I just kind of randomly did things, and like, even when I bridged out to like a really, you know, doofy area and everything, I didn't really study the, the center area just to see um, what the correct path might be, so I didn't even try, I, I, I was just randomly doing things, and then when I finally got to the right path, it was like, oh yeah, it's the one down here above this ice space there, so, so yeah, it was... It was kind of a, a silly way to do things, and I know some of the veterans who may watch this will be like, hey, 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 JB, we made a mistake, you know, but um, I hope it wasn't too unreasonable of a mistake. And we only got one block left, so we should be able to do this without any difficulty, and I think it's over here. Because we passed, yeah, here we go, we passed by this earlier. So yeah, Pier 7, not so bad when you figure out what you're doing. The next level, though, is one of my favorites. It's... It's not one of my, like, top ten favorites, uh, but it's one of those levels that's just fun to play through, and it's got a fun design. So let's go ahead and check it out. Mugger Square. In this one, you have to face off against a bunch of thieves or muggers or whatever you want to call them, and what you don't want to do is collect the boots in the wrong order. Like, you don't want to get these skates because they're going to be taken from you here. Um, but later on, you will use them, so keep that in mind. And same thing with the flippers. Don't get those flippers, because they're going to be taken away from you, too. So just get these. And in this water area, we'll find out that the exit's right there. So we'll come back to that in a little while, which is why we don't want to get the other flippers. And just continue the cycle here. Fire and some fireballs. And they're really camouflaged, too. Okay, so now we got suction shoes, and these will help us get everything else safely without any mugger interference. See, so yeah, I use these ice skates and get this stuff. Go over here. I'm just going to take a shortcut and just go through here. Dodge those gliders. And we're out. Sweet. All right, so the next one. This one, oh, man. <laughs> you have to race to get all these uh, keys in time because that paramecium is going to be triggering some toggle buttons that will release that wall of balls that we just passed by. Now, in the second room of this level involves a bunch of chips, and I don't know why they didn't put that first, just because the chips can serve as a barrier, whereas the keys can't. Now, when we press this, that paramecium doesn't get released, which makes the second section so much easier, because there's no ball danger. So yeah, you can just freely get the chips without any problem. And the reason, the reason why... It, the reason, the reason, <laughs> I'm sorry, the reason why that Paramecium did not get released was because we, um, in the in the game, um, in the level design, if you have a Paramecium or a Blob or a Bug or a Teeth Monster in a trap or a clone machine, it needs like a controller or a boss, which is like a monster before it and the level's monster creature order thing, list, whatever you want to call it, and the, the direction of that uh, determines where that monster will get trapped or, or released, not trapped, released, or cloned. And in that case, the Paramecium did not have a controller, so... Most people just use, like, balls and traps or something like that, so... That works out pretty well. Okay, so anyway, this level, Dig Dirt. So this one, you just go around and just get chips, basically. And thankfully, the monsters here don't circle the uh, chips. Okay, that was really bad timing. Wait, why Why is this not going? Oh, there we go. Okay, for some reason my computer was being really doofy. So anyway, they, they don't circle the, uh, the chips in the same directions as uh, the monsters in the, 
like the Paramecia in the ch -ch chips did. So that really helps you out a lot. And everything's kind of going a little slower than usual here. I'm not sure what's happening. Is my computer just being really strange? Keep in mind, I'm running this on a virtual machine on a Mac, so this may be a little slower than uh, than on a real PC. I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't really have much of a problem, but running this, but all right, there we go. So why in the world is it doing this? I don't know. Anyway, the next the the next level, we get a preview of it with this little message here. It talks about. Um, the ice, and so you get one of these messages from every 10 levels from this point on, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, the next level is called Ice Slide, and I totally did not get the pun in that title at first. Like, I always thought that they were just talking about Chip, you know, being all assertive, and he was like, hey, Ice Slide, you know, but it was really talking about, you know, ice sliding, you know, like, ice slide. So, yeah, <laughs> I totally did not understand that at first. And... This maze is really nice just because you can't die aside from running out of time. Okay, I think everything's back up to normal speed now. So, that's kind of nice. So yeah, you just have to keep track of where you're going and not get lost, which is pretty much the the main challenge of this whole area. And thankfully, you have like a central hub here where you can access every path. There's like one set of paths that's like a loop, I think, but we'll probably... We'll probably encounter that here in a little bit. What I like about this level is that, like I said, you can't die. You can just run to dead ends like that. And there's not, like, fire, water, bombs, you know, just obstacles that make the level irritating. Because, I don't know, it, it's always just really annoying to play a level where you don't really know what you're coming up against, and then you just run into it just because you didn't know about it. And, I mean, there's certain levels where discovery can be interesting, but... In a level that's just kind of arbitrary like that, and... Okay, here's the loop. There you go. In a level that just has arbitrarily placed stuff like that, and they expect you to know that, and just, to just guess, yeah, it's just kind of a little bit awkward. So, it's just kind of one of those things that level designers, like... Like, when I design levels, um, it's just kind of a... It's kind of a... I don't know how to describe it, but it, it's one of those things you have to just watch out for, is just being objective as much as possible about your level's design, because when you design stuff in an editor, you know, you see things, you know, the entire map as it is. You don't just see this 9x9 nine nine view. So you know much more than a player would when they play through the level. Whereas in here, you just have the 9x9 nine nine view, and you have no clue where you're going. So you just kind of have to think like a player when you design levels. That's kind of one thing that I've been trying to do a little bit more of, because I've struggled with this a lot. But I guess that's one of the, the hallmarks of a good puzzle designer, is just knowing what people... Wait a second, didn't I take... Oh, wait, this was the other path, that the loop thing. That's right. Oops. I guess all this commentating made me distracted. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Okay, I knew there was something very familiar about this area, like, right here. I, I knew that there was something really familiar about it, but I just couldn't figure out what it was. Okay, so yeah, let's go over here. Dead end again. Okay. So let's head out over here. Go. Okay, that's a dead end too. And I believe this is, right? Yeah, this is a dead end. See, I'm trying to be kind of systematic while testing out all these paths. Nope, nothing there. One thing I really like about the original game is that these ice mazes are really well designed. Like, I love how these ice corners are all in these cross clusters cross clusters, there you go, um, that are located around the map like this. And I love how that's like a consistent theme throughout the entire thing. Whereas like in other ice mazes, like custom design ones, like a lot of it's just arbitrary, you know, just ice corners and stuff. And it's not quite as elegant as this. I mean, this is just really elegant. I, I love the design of this. And are we going to get the last couple of chips? I think I know where they are, though. I don't think they're on this path. I think they're on this. Yeah, here we go. Okay, this should be the right way to get to the last one. Yes, all right. We're pretty much done. And now it's just a matter of sliding here to the very end. Thankfully, no mazes involved here. It's just one long slide. 
And once again, this is another example of stuff in between the socket and exit, which I think is really awesome. They didn't do enough of that in the original game. Alright, next level is a lot of fun. It's kind of a little bit of a brain teaser. Like here, you come against this wall of fireballs. You can't get through that. You go over here, teeth monster switches, toggle walls. Can't get past that. So what you have to do is trick the teeth monster into pressing and then moving back like that, which should take care of it. Now when we go through here, we have to switch the walls again, but if we just keep track of where the teeth monster is, which is right here, problem solved. There we go. I don't know what that other block is for up there. I mean, I, I guess it's for something, but, but you don't really have to use that. You can just power your way through that. So, so yeah, not too bad of a level. It's, it's a little bit of a brain teaser, but if you figure out how to control the teeth, you should be okay. Oh, this level. This one is interesting. You have to... Um, okay, you can see that there's like a bunch of walkers being cloned here. And the hint implies that you're supposed to use the blocks to get them all the way around the level to a toggle button. But actually, you don't need to do this in the Microsoft version, because you can use your good old ally, the backwards force floor boosting bug. Now, I took a little shortcut there earlier, but here we go. Yeah, just do that, and, you, and you're pretty much good. Now, there have been mods of this level that have been created, and one designer made a mod where you couldn't use the shortcut, and you had to you had to use the blocks, and you just had just enough blocks, like a plus one maybe, to get the walkers all the way around. Yeah, it was really mean. It was like, you had to wait for a long time before the doors opened. Anyhow, next level is called Grail, and this is a really fun, well-designed level, and you don't have to use this area here. I'm not sure... I think it's backwards force floor boosting again that makes this uh, busted, but what you have to do is you have to go down here, and we have to work with these random force floors like that and get those items. And ultimately your goal is to get into the center area, which thankfully is not too difficult. And I don't really know why this is called Grail, I guess. I mean... This, these aren't shaped like the typical holy grail kind of cup thing, but maybe these chips are like cups. I'm not sure. But anyway, I think this is where you use the backwards force floor boosting, is right here. You go in here and, yeah, you power your way through that. Yeah, normally I think you would need the yellow key, but maybe the grail was like supposed to be like in the center area here, and like this is like a glorified pedestal, and like all these bombs are like little torches, and... Okay, I've been watching too much Indiana Jones. All right, Potpourri is the next one. Now with this, you this ice path here, this is pretty much a big loop, so that doesn't do any, do any good. So you don't get much of a time limit here, so you want to make the most of what you've got and be very quick with these tanks because they will get you if you're not quick enough. We can try pushing this block. It just has fire underneath it, but that doesn't get us anywhere. And these blocks, or at least one of them, has a thief underneath it, so you don't want to touch those. Over here, we get a chip under this one. And there's a letter G here. I don't really know what that's all about, but maybe it's like the designer's first initial or something. Alright, I'm going to skip that chip over there because there's an extra chip and we don't need that one. And just get, your, get through these balls. And exits right here. Simple. Potpourri complete. Alright everybody, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video right here. But next time we play, we're going to be going through Deep Freeze, which is a really fun level with a lot of ice and everything. So more ice for... Ice floor? Why did I say ice floor? More ice sliding. That's what I meant to say. Ice sliding. Not eye sliding, but ice sliding. So until next time, this is JB saying goodbye, and thanks for watching.